everyone, my name is Amanda and I am the creative director here at Brambleberry and today I'm going to show you how to make these really cute and really pretty easy Monstera leaf melt and pour soaps. So as the creative director here at Brambleberry, it is my job to come up with projects, test them, recipes, tutorials, kits, and new products, which is one of my favorite things to do here. Um, we have been working really, really hard on this new Monstera soap mold, and we are so excited to see what you guys make with it. Um, our silicone molds are really great to use. They're really easy. Um, they are, of course, bendable, which makes unmolding super simple. Um, and when we were creating this mold, of course, we wanted it to look really cute, um, but we also took a lot of time to think about how you're going to be using projects in it. So, you know, when you unmold it or, you know, the leaves, are they going to be thick enough so that they're not breaking, but also thin enough and delicate enough that they're going to look really cute. Of course, we want it to fit nicely in your hands um, and be, you know, usable for a wide variety of projects. A uh, huge shout out to our product development team, Amber, Caitlin, Oryx, and Jess, who all worked so hard to create this mold. Um, I think I think we killed it. <laughs> Super excited about it and I can't wait to uh, see what you guys make. So right away you'll notice that this mold has the leaf detail and then the leaf detail kind of sits on the base of the soap. So what that means for the mold is that you have your cavity here that you can fill in with melt and pour, with cold process, even a different color of, you know, bath bomb or things like that. Um, and then you're going to fill the base afterwards. Um, this is great for getting a lot of nice contrast and also makes it really easy to fill in those details um, because we really tried hard to give you kind of a thick enough base there that filling in the details wasn't a total pain. What's great about also having kind of that deep enough cavity is if you wanted, you could actually just go ahead and fill in the cavity on its own. Um, and then you have this cute little embed um, that you could put on top of a cold process loaf, um, on top of a different individual cavity. You guys are always killing it when it comes to taking our molds and doing things that I've never thought of. So I really can't wait to see what you guys do with this one. Okay, so let's get making some soap. And then along the way, I'll kind of share some of the tips and things that I found when using this mold with melt and pour. So the first step of this project is of course, filling in those mold details. So here I have about four ounces of clear melt and pour soap base chopped up into nice fine cubes. I won't actually need this much soap base, but I find that melting down any less than about three to four ounces is honestly kind of a pain in the butt and it is really easy to burn it. And when you're working with small amounts like this, filling in details, burning your soap can make it so much harder to pour in and get all those nooks and crannies. So I'm gonna go with four. I'll have a little, uh, li little bit left over and I'll use it for a different project. All right, so to my soap base, I'm gonna add some color blocks, which are just really highly pigmented, if I can get it out of the package, uh, really highly pigmented pieces of melt and pour. So they melt really easy. And I'm gonna put it in here before I melt it, just so that it melts along with the soap. And I want this to be nice and saturated. So I'm actually using quite, I mean, a decent amount of this block for this small amount, but I just wanna make sure I get that really nice contrast between the white and the green. So I'm gonna pop this into the microwave for really like 10, 15 seconds at first, check on it, maybe give it a little stir um, and go from there. Okay, so my soap was in the microwave just for about 30 seconds and I can see it's not totally melted, like there's still some chunks in there, but I'm, at this point I'm gonna stir it and kind of allow the heat from the melted soap to melt down those chunks. You can always microwave it more, but if you over microwave it, uh, that's where things get a little bit tricky. So just take it slow. And let's check the temperature. I'm at 140. So, and that's really about as hot as you want it to get. So again, I'm just gonna keep stirring. I don't know if you can see, I've still got a few little chunks in there. Totally fine. But just give it a minute to kind of melt down those chunks. So those clumps are 
melting and my soap is cooling. So now I'm at about 130, but really I actually wanna bump it back up to that 140 mark. I found that that is kind of the per perfect, like pourable consistency, that the soap is actually thin enough that it's just gonna spread itself out nicely into that detail. So, I mean, yeah, you can see already, whoop, I'm getting nice and gloopy, which is totally fine. So I'm just gonna pop it in for now another 10 to 15 seconds. So another 10 seconds in the microwave and that definitely did the trick. Now we are at a really nice liquid consistency. I've got my alcohol nearby. I'm gonna get rid of bubbles. And we're cooling down quickly. So about one, yeah, we're at 150, cool. All right, set that guy aside and grab your mold. Uh, wipe up this little bit here. And what I like to do before pouring is I actually like to spray the mold itself with alcohol and that's just really gonna help the uh, melt and pour spread really nice and evenly into the mold. Um, so if you have a steady hand and you're feeling confident uh, and your container has a little pour spout, that's really helpful, is you can just pour it directly in and I recommend pouring it right in the middle where it's thickest and really just allow, and you pour slowly and just allowing that soap to spread into all the little crevices. If you need to, you can give it um, a spray to get rid of bubbles. So just pouring. And because my soap is so nice and liquidy, like that's really helping me. If if this cooled down to say like 120 or so, it's gonna start to get a little gloopy, uh, which is gonna make pouring it into these um, cavities kind of difficult. So if you feel like the, this is really hard, it's kind of gloopy, it's not just like going, you know, flowing into the cavities easily, pop it in the microwave for another like five, 10 seconds. So once your cavities are all filled with green soap, go ahead and set this aside. I'll probably use this to just make another batch. And then take a look. I've got a little bit of some droplets um, where they shouldn't be. Um, so if that's the case, no big deal. Um, you just wanna really make sure it is completely cool and then you can go in with a little cleanup tool or even just a little knife or spoon or something and just clean that up. So taking off those little pieces. I like to get any droplets that are maybe on the side too, so that um, the sides of the soap are all nice and clean. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this guy aside and let those cool. I can see they're already starting to become nice and firm uh, while we chop down our white soap. All right, so I've got my white soap base here that I'm going to chop down. I'm looking for about 12 ounces or so. And you could use any kind of base, you know, if you have like the goat milk soap base or um, any kind of, you know, opaque soap base, that would look, work really well. Um, same with this layer, if you had aloe would be really awesome or olive oil, hemp, that kind of thing. Basically just using a clear along with a opaque, not clear base gives you that nice contrast. So I'm just using this crinkle cutter to chop it up into nice even bits. Then I'm going to grab a heat safe container and go for about 12 ounces. Let's see. Ooh, so close, 11, go a little bit more. I always like to have a little bit more than not enough. Got our 12 ounces. I'm gonna pop this in the microwave for about 20 seconds and see where that gets us. All right, so this is what we have after about like 40 seconds. So you can see I still have 
some chunks in there. So I'm just gonna give it a stir and we'll do about another 30 seconds. So I give it another 30 seconds and it's looking good. I still have a few little chunks in there, but I can tell the rest of the soap is really nice and warm. So I don't wanna push it anymore. I'm just gonna let the heat from the melted soap melt down that chunk because um, it's really nice and fluid. So my guess, my guess is we're sitting at like 145, 145. Yeah, that one felt good. <laughs> okay, so stir, 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 spritz with alcohol, and then we're gonna add our fragrance oil. So I am using the Brambleberry Lush Succulent fragrance for this project. It is, it's become one of my favorites um, here at Brambleberry. It is really fresh and green, but also has kind of a nice sweetness to it. So it's, you know, sweeter and a little bit more floral than say like, you know, a grass type fragrance. Um, it's just really nice and well-rounded. Um, I have yet to find a person that doesn't really like it. So giving that a nice stir. And that's gonna bring down our temperature a little bit, which is nice because we don't want the soap to be too hot when we pour it into the mold because we don't want it to melt any of our um, leaf details. We're going for about 120 to 130. So I'm at 135 right now. Um, I'm gonna play it safe and just let it cool down a little bit more just to be safe. All right, I'm going to spritz the cavity with some alcohol. This is gonna help the two layers adhere. And then just gently pour. And if you get any bubbles, just give it a little spritz. Got a little bit more, so let's see if we can top these babies off. Oh yeah. So I went ahead and made these yesterday, so they have had time to fully cool, which is really important for a mold like this that has a lot of details. Um, if you ever try to unmold um, a soap with a lot of details while it's still just a little bit warm, Believe me from experience, you're gonna have more likely that it's going to stick in the mold. So really wait overnight until it's fully cool. I'm gonna go ahead and fully pull each side to make sure that the airlock is broken from every angle before I start kind of pushing. So really breaking that. And then once you're done. What you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna give your soap a little bit of a massage, <laughs> which sounds kind of funny, but really you just wanna use your thumbs to evenly push all around the mold so that you know the pressure is even throughout and that's really gonna help avoid any tearing of those leaves. And you can, you can see it you know, um, as it starts to break that, air, that airlock. Slowly and carefully. All right, we'll do the same with the others. So just again, a little soap massage. And gently press throughout. Basically what you wanna avoid is just like putting all the pressure on one side because that's gonna cause the leaves on the other side to you know, stick to the mold a little bit more. Um, but these really are releasing nice and easy. And last one, little massage. 
So while we're on the topic of unmolding, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that I did that didn't work very well. Um, so one of those was I tested a little bit with some LCP, which is uh, like cold process soap base, um, which has less glycerin than a standard melt and pour soap base. So I tested a little bit of that and I did find that I had a harder time unmolding. Um, it wasn't impossible. I got a few good soaps, but I was a little bit more likely to get some that the leaves broke off. Um, this makes sense because like cold process soap has less glycerin, it's a little bit harder and a little bit more brittle, um, which is great if you're trying to avoid sweating. But in this case, I did find it was a little bit more likely to cause breakage. So if you really like to use like cold process, it's not impossible, but definitely kind of using that massage technique um, to apply even pressure is really gonna help. Um, and of course, letting it completely cool. So another project that I tested with this mold were bath bombs. Um, if you're using bath bombs with silicone molds, um, it is totally possible. You just maybe need a little more finesse. Um, you really want to make sure that you are really pressing that bath bomb mixture into all the details. And I mean like, really pressing. So really, you know, filling it up with your uh, mixture and then using, I like to use the back of my hand um, or, you know, my palm to really, really press that in there. So this is especially true for this cavity that has the fine details. Um, in my tests, I found that a basic bath bomb mixture, so baking soda, citric acid, witch hazel, um, worked a little bit better than a bath bomb where I added quite a bit of extra oil. Um, my thought process there was like, oh, coconut oil, it'll add kind of that hardness and firmness. Um, but it actually just didn't dry quite as firmly, I think. Um, so I had better luck with kind of a more basic bath bomb mixture. Um, that doesn't mean you can't add extra oils, just something to take, uh, take into consideration. Um, so again, this is a bath bomb that I made yesterday. Really important, really, really important that you let your bath bomb mixture fully dry in um, a silicone mold like this. So again, um, you want to just start kind of slowly massaging that back of the mold um, and really taking your time here to really press evenly into every little nook and cranny. I'm gonna make sure that that airlock is broken by pulling away the sides. Okay. And you can kind of start to feel it want to fall out, which I'm kind of starting to feel. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay. And then I'm gonna start to push a little more firmly It does take a little extra time, but it's like, it's, it's, it's worth it. All right. And I think I feel it coming out. Ta-da! Yay, okay, so again, came out really nicely. And you can hear like how firm that bath bomb is. That's really what you want with a mold like this. So making sure, again, you are letting it completely, completely dry, really give it overnight um, is ideal. Um, I just went ahead and used um, just a basic mixture. I didn't add any color, but I do want to really quickly add a little paint on top. I think it would be look really cute. Okay, so I'm just gonna add about a teaspoon of my Kermit Green Mica with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And this is about, about a tablespoon. So one teaspoon might go to one tablespoon alcohol. Give that a little mix. And then you can just paint your leaf. And again, this looks really cute. Um, I mean, just white, but really outlining that leaf really makes it pop. And it's nice because the alcohol dries so quickly that when you touch this bath bomb, it really doesn't leave a lot of um, mica on your hands. You could use oil, um, but it's, it would just kind of, you know, it would seep in, it would still work, but you might kind of get a little bit of like an oily mica uh, residue on your hands. Witch hazel, I have found, doesn't really work great. Uh, because it does have a little bit more water and, and that like large amount of kind of, you know, condensed witch hazel on the bath bomb can um, 
set off the fizzing reaction. So alcohol is really the way to go here. And having these um, details kind of nice and lifted up off the mold make it super easy to paint. You really don't need to have any artistic ability. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that little, little dot detail white. There we go, little Monstera leaf bath bomb, super cute. So another project that I have played around with, um, with this mold is lotion bars. Um, works really, really well in this mold, but some things to consider. Um, in my tests, I found that a super hard kind of brittle bar, something with a lot of beeswax, like 40% and up, um, actually was more likely to break off. Um, again, kind of like the uh, LCP, just the more brittle that the um, mixture was, the more likely it was to tear off when I was unmolding. So decreasing that beeswax a little bit um, really helped. Even increasing the liquid oils could help. Again, there's a million different factors and variations you could do, but in general, that's what I found, was that um, a bar with a lot of beeswax wasn't ideal. I also recommend if you pop your lotion bars into the fridge or freezer right after making them, when you remove them, I found that letting the bars kind of come to a more room temperature um, unmolded a little bit easier. Um, again, it just wasn't as hard and brittle unmoving. And again, give that bar a nice massage <laughs> when you push it out, just to make sure that all the pressure is evenly distributed when you're unmolding. And then last but certainly not least is cold process soap. So this mold works great for cold process soap, but I do have some tips. Sodium lactate is your best friend with this mold. I really, really strongly recommend using sodium lactate if you're using this mold with cold process soap. Um, it basically sodium lactate, I use it for every batch, mostly because I'm super impatient when it comes to unmolding my soap. And sodium lactate makes it so that really I can unmold just about anything in about a day, two days at the most. Um, it's gonna give you, it's gonna make your bars nice and hard. So that's gonna help remove it cleanly from the mold. Um, a water discount is also a really good idea. Um, basically that means you're using a little bit less water in your water and lye solution and that will help the soap harden more in the mold, making it easier to unmold. And then again, really consider the oils that you're using in your recipe. Um, using something with a little bit more, you know, butters or firm oils like a cocoa butter, even a mango butter, coconut oil, palm oil, things like that. That's going to unmold a little bit easier than a soap that's made of, you know, say 70% olive oil or something like that. That might be a little bit tricky to unmold with something with fine Ooh, fine details like this. Um, so just making sure that you're using a good amount of firm oils is really gonna help. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I really can't wait to see what you guys do with this mold. I've had a lot of fun testing different colors and techniques, and I know you guys are gonna create some amazing things. If you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe to the Brain Bavaria YouTube channel. And if you guys have any ideas for projects or videos that you wanna see, give us a comment below. We love to hear your input. Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Monstera leaf melt and pour soaps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I really can't wait to see what you guys do. I said dude, that was like a really weird. <laughs> I can't wait to see you guys do. <laughs> like, <laughs> one of that, one of those things, one of that thing <laughs> is mold. <laughs> so I can't wait to see what you guys do because you always, okay. I, I just like really can't wait. Do you guys? Can't wait. I like, it's very I will not wait. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so hot. Okay. Oh my God, Brooke, I'm so sweaty. <laughs> I think that's all. I think that's all. I think that's all, right. all the tips I got for you. Nice. You're on your own now. <laughs> Go forth, create. <laughs>